Dr. Punch, uh, you were such a big part of both eras of NASCAR and ESPN, both integrations of it. Tell us about that, of being a part of both periods that, that NASCAR was a part of ESPN. It, I mean, when you look at the history of ESPN, uh, you know, it was huge in the growth of the network, but also it was twofold. ESPN was a huge part of the growth of NASCAR. It was really, uh, especially in that, that first integration, a great marriage between the two. Yeah, it really was. I, <clears throat> ESPN was just trying to grow as a 24-hour cable network, and NASCAR needed exposure. So it was one of those things where you scratch my back, I scratch yours. It was a hand-in-hand. -hand. Uh, it worked really well for both. Um, <clears throat> and, um, and I think that uh, and, and the people that we had a guy named Terry Lingner, who's still around today, who produces a lot of the IndyCar stuff out of Indianapolis. <clears throat> he was our first coordinator producer for motorsports. And he, he brought in a couple of guys that were doing, uh, uh, doing races up there uh, at a local short track. Guys named Bob Jenkins and Larry Newber. Wow. Uh, he brought those guys in. <clears throat> Excuse me. They were doing Thursday Night Thunder. Um, and then he brought, he brought me in and then Benny in. And uh, the thing is, we all had a passion for motorsports. None of us, we got paid uh, initially, not a lot, but we got paid uh, and, but we all had, we, it was a labor of love. We, we weren't, we were, we wanted to be there uh, and, and we, we covered it for the fans because we were fans and many of us grew up racing and grew up around it. So it wasn't a job for us. It was a passion. And I think that's what came through is, is when, when we had a break, when we had a chance to go a rain delay. Uh, we went and talked to drivers or car owners. We sit guys down and have a round table, an impromptu round table uh, with these guys and visit. And the fans, and if you looked at, if you look at the ratings, uh, when we'd have a rain delay, the ratings would go up because suddenly the fans knew we we're going to start talking to drivers. We we're going to bring these guys out and sit down and just have them sit on a bunch of good year tires and tell stories. And we have, and people, you can't get that anywhere. No other major league sport do you have that kind of access. You can't go to an NBA game or an NFL game and, and walk on the field and talk to players like you can a NASCAR race. These guys will walk out to the car and they'll give you sign an autograph and, you know, hug a baby or whatever. And they uh, hug or kiss their wife, say a prayer, and they get in a car. Pretty doggone special, the access and the fact that people could identify with who these drivers uh, were. So I, it was just special. And we, we, were, we, we were a part of that. Um, we wanted to tell everybody's story. And, and the, what we decided, because we're race fans, is everybody in the field mattered. Uh, on our first did NASCAR, every driver, whether you were running 38th or 8th, had a story. Everybody's cars mattered. I made sure that I mentioned every sponsor. I went and worked on, I talked to every single driver in the garage area. And David will attest, I'd go by and talk to crew chief, car owner, engine builder. And we, it was a lot of work every weekend. But if you wanted to be able to tell that guy's story, because that, you, that 15 seconds you're able to tell the story might be the difference in him having a sponsor the next two weeks or not. And so we knew that. Uh, and unfortunately, as the racing evolved, more and more networks got where they only, only want to cover the, you know, the top four or five or six guys in the race or the top 10 and everybody else's, you know, hardly ever gets mentioned or gets noticed unless something, if something bad happens. And then the chase came along and unfortunately, and the chase was, the design was to try to create more excitement in the sport. But when those last 10 races took place, drivers would always come to us and say, we know that if you're not in the chase, you're not in the race and you don't get covered. And that was sort of, and that, and, and we, we tried to explain to some of the people in, in Florida that, when you eliminate drivers, you eliminate fans, uh, and you can't do that. You may think you're going to keep the, the 10 most popular drivers, but you're also eliminating 30 more drivers who also have fans and viewers, and <clears throat> that eventually will catch up with you, and I think it did. Um, but we, we, we were fortunate to do it. Uh, Ned Jarrett, Benny Parsons, uh, John Kernan, <clears throat> Bob Jenkins, um, <clears throat> uh, you know, we had such a great team, Dick Bergren. Um, we had just such a such a great broadcast. You know, many of us had had come from radio. Uh, in fact, I, one of the last races I did on MRN, uh, I'll never forget this. MRN Motor Racing Network. Uh, you had a production meeting out behind Barney Hall's uh, Olds ninety eight in the parking lot. He'd raise his big <laughs> trunk of his Olds ninety eight, and that was the, that was the office, and wow. whatever he had in the trunk is what you sipped on before the race. But but I remember being at Talladega, and it was Barney Hall. And Jack Aroot were, were the two guys in the booth. Uh, Mike Joy was covering turn two 
Eli Gold was covering turn three. Wow. Dave Despain was doing turn four. Yeah. And me and Ned Jarrett and Dick Bergen were the pit announcers. That was a pretty good radio broadcast team there. I, 